A few years ago, brands like Teflon faced a potential death blow with new legislation that is aimed at restricting and eliminating forever chemicals like PTFE. But they're not going down quietly. They're fighting back. But first, let me take you through a quick journey through the last 50 years of Teflon and how we got here. In the mid 20th century, a groundbreaking chemical was invented, one that nothing would stick to. It revolutionized cookware and countless other products. It became a symbol of modern innovation. But behind the scenes, a much darker story unfolded. Studies conducted by the very companies making the chemicals revealed serious health risks, particularly to women and their unborn children. Meanwhile, the factories were producing a toxic sludge. Some of it was just dumped straight into waterways where the factories were beside riverbanks. Some of it got shipped to farmer's field and buried in the fields that then poisoned the local drinking water. But this entire time, the research and what the understanding of these chemicals that was understood at the factory level, they knew what they were doing was toxic. So what did they do? Did they stop production? Did they let everybody know? Did they clean up the mess they had made? Of course not. There's way too much money to be made. Instead, they concealed their findings and they kept making the toxic chemicals. How is this possible? Weak oversight and self-regulation. Factory level mistakes became systematic and government agencies meant to oversee and regulate and enforce the industry were staffed by industry insiders. It was a closed loop of negligence and greed. Then came Rob Ballot, a lawyer who was corporate lawyer for these big corporate companies. He was convinced by the locals and shown the, what was becoming the evidence that the local companies had been poisoning the waterways and poisoning farmers fields that then would then poison the waterways. And people in local communities were becoming sick from these chemicals. He spent years and years fighting these corporations. He, in the end, exposed the truth, won massive settlements, and is now forcing the companies to clean up the toxic sludge that they dumped into waterways and into farmers fields. His story is so shocking. It's an absolute must read. I've linked his book of this entire story that is based on fact and what happened within the court of law at the description of this video. Unfortunately, the genie is out of the bottle. These chemicals, known as PFAS chemicals, that's a group of chemicals that all different types of nonstick chemicals over history have been a part of, they don't break down easily. Think centuries, not years. Even today, while the industry doesn't dump raw sewage into waterways and into farmers fields anymore, it still gets into our environment through the manufacturing and disposable of these chemicals that are used in creating all different types of nonstick services, including cookware. Now, as lawmakers worldwide are pushing for a ban or heavily restricting the use of PFAS chemicals, the industry is fighting back. In 2024, two major cookware brands, Meyer and Group Seb, that you would probably know as All Cloud or TFL, created a nonprofit called the Cons Cookware Sustainability Alliance, the CSA. Their mission? To resist these bans on toxic chemicals. Why? They argue that the cookware themselves is harmless to humans. The industry claims that nonstick cookware and other nonstick coated items in the kitchen, the use of the PFAS chemicals is negligible and there is no harm to humans. But what they won't tell you about, and they don't advertise of course, is that the manufacturing process and the disposal of nonstick cookware releases toxic chemicals, the same toxic chemicals that were found, the companies were found to be liable previously, they release the exact same toxic chemicals into our environment. Currently, the battleground is in Minnesota, where this year, a sweeping ban on PFAS chemicals came into effect on January 1st of 2025. The CSA filed a lawsuit against Minnesota, Minnesota's Pollution Control Agency claiming that while they do use PFAS, it is harmless to humans. So I'm just going to read this just so I get it clear because this is directly from the suit. The Cookware Sustainability Alliance argues in the lawsuit that the application of these chemicals to create nonstick properties in cookware has been repeatedly validated as safe for food for contact by the FDA and other regulatory bodies. 
So how do we get to this place that Teflon is arguing that it's totally safe and should be good for consumption? Let me just imagine for a sec what the boardroom was when they were deciding to start the CSA. You know, what would be the president of one of these companies talking, talking to maybe their legal team of how did we decide that we wanted to fight back against something that we had already been proven to be toxic? So president, hey, I've used these cookwares my entire life and I'm totally fine. How do we stop this? Lawyer, hey, Mr. President, there's overwhelming evidence that PFAS chemicals harm humans have been poisoned our environment. But do our pans make people sick? No, but the chemicals used to make the pans create the problem and that's what's poisoned the planet. Well, if our pans don't hurt anybody, let's fight back. Let's form an alliance and tell people that their freedom is at risk. So here we are. The CSA is fighting to protect their bottom line. They are casting doubt on the data and they're framing this as an attack on our freedom to choose. But remember, cookware is not the core issue. It's the industry and the chemicals in which pollute our planet. The new Minnesota PFAS ban is known as Amara's Law, which honors Amara Strand, who died at 20, just a few days before the law was passed in Minnesota from liver cancer. In the final months of her life, Amara advocated intensively for the ban and traveled to the capital several times before her death. She believed that her sickness came from cell mutations from PFAS in her local drinking water, and she used her illness as a catalyst for change. The assistant commissioner for the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency said, for PFAS, there's a number of health concerns, but some of the most known are liver issues, low birth weight, and kidney cancers. PFAS can be exposed to people through drinking water and groundwater if contaminated through fish, if the fish has too much, and other direct exposures from contact with PFAS in products. The CSA, in a press release, said the Minnesota law swept up cookware along with a range of other categories of consumer products being newly regulated because of growing PFAS concerns. They continue, we are asking a federal court in Minnesota for a preliminary injunction of this Minnesota law banning the sale of cookware containing fluoropolymers, which are the chemical coating on the pans commonly known as nonstick cookware. Although this law defines the fluoropolymers used in cookware as PFAS, they are fundamentally different compounds from the chemicals that have motivated the concerns about PFAS. That was what the CSA had said in a press release. So they're using PFAS, PTFE, but not the bad PFAS, and definitely not the PFAS that was used before. This is the industry's same old song, that everything was fixed, everything's fine, go about your business, nothing's wrong. They're completely ignoring that the chemicals used in, in the pans are the chemicals that go into our environment in the manufacturing and the disposal process of these pans. And that is where the contamination comes from. The pans themselves that you're using them very well may not give anybody any issues. Nobody's ever been proven to get sick from these pans, but the pans, the use of the pans and the time that you have the pans is only part of the life cycle of these pans. So the truth here is that while the pans themselves may have no proof to hurt anybody and people that love to tell anybody who wants to listen that the pans are, are inert and won't cause a problem, the chemicals in the production, the life cycle of the chemicals is the issue. From the beginning to the end, our planet continues to get poisoned by PFAS chemicals and the pans can claim that they are just not any part of it and stick their head in the sand just to sell you more cookware. So what do you think? Should we be holding the cookware companies liable or should they get a free pass like they're asking for? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much.